Now in its 24th year, the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad is the oldest and most prestigious nationwide mathematics competition among high school students. After its trial run in 1984, it was officially launched in 1986 and has been held annually since 2007. The country's contestants to the International Mathematical Olympiad are chosen from the top students who compete in the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad. The PMO is a project of the Mathematical Society of the Philippines and the Department of Science and Technology Science Education Institute. Not all problems can be solved by evaluating a formula. Sometimes, ang kailangan gawin, consider what the different possibilities are, look at different cases. This problem is from the 23rd PMO, number six, qualifying stage. In rolling three fair 12-sided dice simultaneously, what is the probability that the resulting numbers can be arranged to form a geometric sequence? We have three colored 12-sided dice, each of them producing 12 numbers after each roll. So the probability we're looking for is a fraction with denominator 12 to the third. Well, that's the easy part. The more difficult part is what the numerator is. What are we counting here? We're counting ordered triples A, B, C, such that they can be arranged to form a geometric sequence. 2, 6, 18 is a geometric sequence, but 18 is too large. After all, the outcomes from each die can only be 12 at most. One, three, and nine is okay. So is nine, three, and one. So note that these are based on the same numbers. Now, even though three, one, nine in its own is not a geometric sequence, this is still gonna be counted because they can be arranged into one, three, nine, or nine, three, one to form a geometric sequence. Now, these are examples where the common ratio is equal to three. If we experiment and explore, we're going to see that the common ratio cannot be too large because if we go to the next integer common ratio four, even if we start with the lowest number one, the next would be four, the next would be 16, but 16 is larger than 12. So it's not going to work. Now, from the three valid outcomes we considered, let's choose as representative 139, because 139, it can be rearranged to form other possibilities. So in ascending order, we can therefore assume that A is less than or equal to B, less than or equal to C, or in other words, the common ratio. For now, let's assume it's greater than or equal to 1. Now, if the common ratio is an integer, then it can only be three at most because, well, we saw earlier, r equal to four, it's not gonna work. However, the common ratio does not have to be an integer. So what are the possibilities here? A, B, C themselves, they have to be integers, but the common ratio, it can be a non-integer fraction. So let's analyze. Because we have a geometric sequence, B is A multiplied by R. Multiply that further, that will be the value of C, A times R squared. Or in other words, R squared is C over A. Now, the values of A and C can only be taken from 1 all the way to 12. So that limits the choices. Furthermore, C over A has to be a perfect square. And we may as well assume that C over A is not an integer because r is not an integer. So r squared in turn will also not be an integer. Now for the numbers one all the way to 12, we only have one, four, nine as our perfect squares. And if c over a is not an integer, that really doesn't leave us much of a choice. It's just nine over four. So uh, even if you consider multiples like uh, 18 over 8. Now, nah, 18 is too large. So that means R can only be three halves. We have these four choices. Let's analyze each case rather, rather than choice. If R is equal to 1, then that means A equals B equals C. So this is how the outcomes should look like. And so that means A can still be any of the numbers from 1 all the way to 12. If the common ratio is 2, then we have a, 2a, 4a. The largest number, 4a, cannot exceed 12. So that means a is at most 3. If the common ratio is 3, then we have a, 3a, 9a. 
the largest number, 9a is at most 12. a equals one is still okay, but nine times two is gonna be 18 too large. So a is only one. If r is equal to three halves, we have a three halves of a, nine over four of a. So that means a has to be divisible by four. If a is equal to four, we get uh, four, six, nine. If a is equal to eight, nine fourths of eight is gonna be 18 too large. So a can only be four. Now, if we have the triple a, 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 you really cannot rearrange the entries of seven, seven anymore. So that's it. However, if you have a to a, four a, and let's say a is equal to three. So let's say you have uh, three, six, and 12. Well, you could still sort them in three factorial ways or six. And we do the same for the uh, other cases. So when we uh, do the computation, we get in blue 12, 18, six, and six, whose sum is 42. Back to the original problem, we're looking for the numerator. We now know it should be 42. And when reduced to lowest terms, that leads to the final answer, D, 7 over 288. Now, the 22nd Philippine Math Olympiad had a similar problem in the qualifying stage, number four. Three dice are simultaneously rolled. What's the probability that the resulting numbers can be arranged to form an arithmetic sequence? I invite you to try it out. I will not go into the specifics, but each die will uh, produce six outcomes. So the fraction is, uh, the, the probability is a fraction with denominator six to the third power. And as for the numerator of 42, I invite you to try to imagine what the different possibilities are for our arithmetic sequence. This time, look into what the common difference could be. Let's have a look at a different problem. This time, no sequences involved. Two numbers, A and B, chosen randomly from the set one all the way to 10 in order and with replacement. So that means you choose a number, call that A. 10 possibilities. Next, choose a number, B, 10 possibilities. So what's the probability that the point AB lies above the graph of y equals ax cubed minus bx squared? For the ordered pairs AB, there are 10 squared or 100 possibilities. It doesn't mean though that C is the final answer because you could still end up with a lower denominator after reducing to lowest terms. But let's have a look at what it means for the point AB to be above the graph of y equals x cubed minus bx squared. It means that that red point AB is above this red point just below it and on the graph. But because that lower point is just below, so it means it has the same x coordinate A. And as for the y coordinate, re replace x by A in the formula defining the function. So we get a to the four minus a squared b. And the higher point would therefore have a y coordinate that's larger than the y coordinate of the lower point. So that's how we capture a b lying above the graph. In other words, b is greater than a to the fourth minus a squared b. So the points a b that we're looking for all it takes, all that we want, is for them to satisfy this inequality. Now, instead of verifying, testing each of the 100 possible ordered pairs vis-a-vis -vis this inequality, let's start to be smart about this. Um, well, we could move the B terms to the same side because we can solve for B. Uh, the left side factors B times one plus A squared. Therefore, B is greater than A to the four over A squared plus one. This is ultimately the condition that should be enforced, this inequality. Now, um, B is at most 10, so is A. But if A is 10, then that means we need B to be larger than 10,000 over 101. Without actually carrying out the division, we realize that's not gonna be possible because B is at most 10 and the right side fraction, it's definitely larger than 10. So uh, 
uh, not gonna work with phase 10. What about nine, eight, seven? That might be too time consuming. So we're gonna have to go back to that inequality condition and try to rephrase that, rewrite it in a much more convenient way. Uh, you could carry out the long division or here's what I did, subtract one and add one so that a to the four minus one can be divided exactly by a squared plus one. So that's gonna give you a squared minus one. And then the fractional part is one over a squared plus one. But fortunately, because b has to be an integer and a squared minus one is an integer and one over a squared plus one cannot be an integer, then that means this is the condition that we should enforce. B is greater than a squared minus one, definitely simpler. So A cannot be too large. So let's uh, look at small values of A. Let's start with that. If A is equal to one, then we need B to be greater than zero. So great, that means we have 10 possible choices for B from one all the way to 10. If A is equal to two, we need B to be greater than two squared minus one or three. So B can run from four all the way to 10. We have seven choices. If A is equal to three, B should be larger than nine minus one or eight. So B can be nine or 10, two choices. Now, if A is four or five, and we need B to be larger than A squared minus one, that means B is at least or greater than 16 minus one, but 15 goes beyond the collection of numbers from one all the way to 10. So A cannot be larger than or equal to four. A can only be one, two, or three. And we've written down in blue, the corresponding number of choices for B. That means we have a total of 19 acceptable ordered pairs AB. So what do you know? The final answer is indeed C. 19 over 100. Thanks for listening. The Mathematical Society of the Philippines is the country's premier professional organization dedicated to the promotion of mathematics research and education in the country. Founded in 1973, it has grown from a small Manila-based group of math educators to a nationwide network of individuals with chapters all over the country. The Philippine Mathematical Olympiad is organized by the Mathematical Society of the Philippines in partnership with the Department of Science and Technology Science Education Institute. The 24th PMO will be held online in two stages, the qualifying stage in February 2022 and the national stage in March 2022. The start of the registration is January 2022. More details are in our Facebook page and also in our webpage, pmo.ph.